Now we're going to make a frequency test of the uh, implant, chip implants, Marco. What exactly uh, can you learn from a frequency test? These techs are communicating on a specific frequency. It's on what frequency? 13.56 megahertz. In principle, what, what I'm doing here, it's just like uh, some device which um, can get the uh, transmissions by a frequency. So you have a program, you set a specific frequency you're interested in to uh, um, data transmission uh, frequencies, uh, channels, and uh, you can see uh, the data and could also record it. What I have here is um, um, some tool. I already set it to the specific frequency. Um, when I don't have the RFID reader plugged in, you see there is uh, no activity on that given frequency. And when I plug it in, you see uh, signal is it's coming. It's picking up uh, several signals. If because, yeah, it's now acting. So uh, this is transmitting to, to the antenna? This is yeah. transmitting and the antenna is receiving that stuff. Um, you can also see sometimes drops here, mm. like here, for example. These are just, he's trying to ping for mm -hmm. attack. If I would now record this data, I would then need to demodulate it and see what was transferred in that frequency range at that time. So this is in fact picking up information at a greater distance than the reader, b yeah. with the help Without, of the reader. Yeah, the, the interesting thing here is, is of course completely passive because this one uh, cannot activate the RFID tag because it has no, mm -hmm. uh, not the magnetic field which is required for activating the tag and powering the tag. Um, but it could be used to just record information on that specific frequency when you're exchanging into, uh, information on that. Because this reader activates the tag and then interacts with the tag mm -hmm. and all this interaction this is just the default. This is, is uh, uh, accessible also from a distance. Interesting. Right. So the chip cannot be hacked unless something is close. But when I put it close to a reader, then antennas can pick up information b that is transmitted between the chip and the reader. Right. And how it's far uh, away can you do this? Uh? Oh, this depends just on the antenna. Uh, this is already going uh, up to some meters. Yeah. But of course, this is more complicated because you really need to go into demodulating all mm -hmm. the recorded data and then need to be lucky, lucky to uh, identify the protocol and get out the information you really want. When I put my chip close to the reader, uh, we're going to see if this pattern changes. Yeah. And you see, something started now with uh, the information started to be transmitted here. Yeah. yeah, right. And you can also see the things, so if you're going closer to the antenna, you see you it's see getting a much more wider data. spectrum. And if you're going a bit away, Mm. then it's, nothing. it's getting less. Uh, there is still mm. some data, but as I said, it depends. It depends on, on, the, on the, the, the power the, and yeah. the size of the antenna, obviously. So if you wanted to secretly pick up uh, someone's chip, you need, may not need a reader. You just need to be close to an existing reader. So uh, we've run uh, some tests here. To conclude, Marco, uh, Correct me if I'm wrong, but we have learned that it's really easy to read uh, these chips if you are close yeah. and you can pick up all the data that is on this chip uh, very quickly. Secondly, we learned that it is not very easy to copy these chips. And then thirdly, we learned that uh, by the use of a, of a sniffer, uh, we can pick up communication between a chip and a reader at, at a distance. So, as I said, this is a bit also more complex because identifying the protocol, getting into it. Um, so this will require time mm. and the right tools. So it's easier to interact with an RFID reader itself uh, to get the data rather than an extra sniffing, sniffing uh, right. toys. Okay, thank you so much. Okay, thanks.